Are you really pretty or do you just look white? I'm not trying to ruffle no feathers, I promise. But it's just a quick question. Nope. That's right. What's up, what's good, yo? What's sizzling? It's your fave frustrated creative show, Lay Simon, in for another video. Welcome back. How y'all doing? Thank you guys so much for 2K. Can you imagine? Literally last month we got to 1K and now we had 2K. Per, per. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate each and every one of y'all. Thank you. If you're new to my channel, hi, hello, hola, my name is Shole, and this is my creative entertainment channel where I post social, cultural, and movie commentary. Now let's jump into this video. Well, today I'm here to talk about pretty privilege and how it upholds the European beauty standards and how this might be an issue more than we think. From the dawn of time, whiteness has been the standard for pretty much everything, so it doesn't come as a surprise as the European beauty standard is a way for us to grade ourselves in terms of how beautiful we are. However, I think we need a second to look within ourselves and define whether the compilation of all our features determine our beauty or our beauty being graded by a default that's not inherently correct. Let us quickly define pretty privilege by our trusted urban dictionary. Pretty privilege is essentially when someone receives clout opportunities and becomes more successful in life just based off the fact they're attractive. And we have seen many examples of this where people can deem you as being a nicer person just based on the way you look. And it is attributed to the halo effect. The halo effect simply implies that we subconsciously attribute someone's appearance to their overall character when that's not the case. Pretty Privilege has the opportunity of opening many avenues for many people. For instance, there was a study in 2017 that shows that people who are naturally prettier have the ability of having higher grade point averages. I don't know how, but I will link it down below. Pretty Privilege also has the ability of improving your romantic endeavors as you would have a plethora of people to choose from that just like you based off how attractive you are. Let's think society for a second for that. Anyways. But Pretty Privilege has the ability of affecting your life in such a way where people believe that based on how attractive you are, it determines how they treat you, how much respect you're given, and how you can basically go scot-free for many things just based off the fact that you're aesthetically pleasing to the eye. Which can be rather problematic if you ask me. But the thing we see here is that Pretty Privilege is basically built on the paradigm of European standards of beauty. And the minute you don't fit there, you become an outcast. But what about the other cultures that have their own beauty standards? As we see things as having a more westernized ideology, but what about the people who are across the world and have different ideologies than we do. Are they not allowed to uphold their own beauty standards without being upstaged by European beauty standards? But it's kind of crazy if you think about it because everybody sort of adheres to the westernized culture and we practically see all cultures adhere to the European beauty standard. Interesting, don't you think? I blame colonization, but anyways. With this talk of pretty privilege, I wanted to talk about futurism and how it's directly tied to it without us really speaking on it much. Unless you've been living under a rock, you can see that various social media platforms tend to put a spotlight on specific people coming out and basically taking social media by storm. But the thing is, they all kind of look the same. However, when we call it out and we say that many of these people who are now coming out to be the stars on these social media platforms or these certain people are pushed the most, based off the way they look and it being very closely related to European beauty standards, all of a sudden there's a whole bunch of hoopla about it and people become obtuse about the whole situation. Comprehension doesn't seem to be a widespread thing anymore. A beautiful woman of color, the comments always say things like, oh, well, it's only because she has Eurocentric features. I have been white and for this one, stop telling fully black people that they have Eurocentric features. Stop invalidating black beauty by comparing it to white people. We're not fucking monolith. Not all black people look the same. Not all black people have big noses and big lips. News fucking flash. I'm very much aware that there is a Eurocentric beauty standard, but saying I have Eurocentric features as a fully black person 
as a Nigerian? Literally, what are you talking about? Y'all are literally feeding into the stereotype of what black people are supposed to look like. Stop. It's weird and very much ignorant, very much problematic. Now I'm not gonna lie, we start to see this a little bit more becoming a reoccurring pattern in the black community, especially on social media, where there'll be huge pages glorifying dark skin or glorifying black women, which is fine. But then you start to see that all the women start to look the same. They got the same nose, the same eyes, the same lips, the same face shape, the same body types. And then when we go ahead and say that, yo, they all have the same look because they all have Eurocentric features. People wanna start acting as if that we're being anti-black. When we're just pointing the fact that many people tend to look at dark-skinned people as unattractive, but the minute they got some Afrocentric looking features with a hint of Eurocentric looking features, they're the best thing that ever happened to man. Like, it's not making any type of sense. So definitely go watch her other TikTok videos because she makes a lot of points. But yeah, we need to have this conversation. Seeing these comments in these videos about featurism is so wild. Like Eurocentric versus European is tearing y'all up. It's tearing y'all up. Just for the sake of clarification, Eurocentric is like an actual sociological term. Literally anybody, like any person can have Eurocentric features regardless of their race. We're saying that your features align with European beauty standards. And that's a real phenomenon. That's a real thing. And that explains why Blue Ivy and Northwest are the exact same skin tone, but Blue Ivy is the one who got bullied as a child. So funny too, because y'all be like, black people do have those features. East Africans have those features. They had them first. That's where they came from. And it's like, yeah, that's why you only see East Africans on these edits of beautiful black women. Like, what's not clicking? Like, have you noticed many of the darker skinned women that are being pushed out as being beautiful and amazing and everyone just seems to fawn all over them tend to be Eurocentric in the face and Eurocentric in the body or Eurocentric in the face and Afrocentric in the body? Interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Anywho, we need to push for more representation for women who actually fit the beauty standard of where they're actually coming from more because it seems as though that everything boils down to whiteness. Everything boils down to European standards. And it's quite unfortunate because when we go ahead and see women who do exhibit their own beauty standards of where they're from, they're deemed as ugly, they're deemed as unprofessional, they're deemed as unattractive, when that's simply not the case. And if we are gonna push these women, let us not over-sexualize them either, yeah? Okay, okay. I just wanted to point that out because the minute a girl got a big yash, all of a sudden, she's attractive because y'all over-sexualized her. That's weird. It's giving very much predator, but anyways. Anyways. Well, would it really be predator if she's, okay, anyways. Shy don't over-sexualize her, please. You can enjoy her beauty without making her feel as if she's a sex object. I'm trying to stay away from the, you get what I'm trying to say, okay? <laughs> but something I started to see in the early 2010s all the way to now is that when someone partakes from European beauty standards and African beauty standards, it's interesting on how much influence they have. For instance, Kim K, and I don't want to constantly bring up her family, but notice how because she now has a big yash and she looks more like an african woman but in her face she looks more european the amount of influence that she has is like scary even her sisters like it doesn't make any sense and honestly i didn't dig too much into it because honestly i might make a part two to this video because there's a lot to unpack here but let me know what you think down below do you believe the reason why kim k and her family were able to penetrate the way they did was because they started to associate themselves with black people they started to look biracial maybe this is not a new phenomenon maybe i'm tripping out but I just think it's crazy that when you're able to mix 
two beauty standards and get a hybrid all of a sudden you are the newest thing on the block like you are this that and the third you're everything you know it's just i just thought it was rather interesting but let me know what you think down below what i believe we should be pushing more for is representation of all different types of beauty it shouldn't just be based on european beauty standards that we view people as being beautiful in the western world there are many different people different cultures and ethnicities who exude such beautiful features but because they don't look european we don't find them beautiful we don't find them attractive and this can actually diminish someone's self-esteem because you may be beautiful in your home country, but when you come to America, all of a sudden, you're not as pretty. Or you can be pretty, but be an outlier. And there are other people who look just like you, but because you're the outlier, they don't get the same kind of privilege you do. And let us recognize our privilege that we do have. For instance, I may be a dark-skinned girl, but because of the face I have and the body I have, I'm deemed as beautiful, I'm deemed as pretty. How can I go ahead and use that to my advantage for not only myself, but for someone else who may not look like me and should honestly be reaping the benefits that I do as well. I don't see that many people out here with pretty privilege using their privilege to help themselves and other people in the right way, just saying, but anyways. I don't have an issue with pretty privilege if I'm gonna be honest with you because if your face can give you that much influence and that much power, girl, you better use it. Boy, you better use it, honestly. I don't see an issue with it. It just pushes for people to take care of themselves more, if that makes any sense. I'm not saying people should go ahead and get into plastic surgery in order to improve their physical features or their body in order to be more beautiful. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that we should go ahead and push for more care towards your physical appearance because that's what people foresee. And I honestly believe when you start to see yourself looking better, you start to feel better. As a woman, I could definitely say once I get my nails done, I go for a facial, I get my toes done, you know, I'm going ahead to get a wax done on my body, I feel better about myself. And when you also take care of your insides as a person, you still feel better and that reflects in your physical appearance. We need to push for that more. No need to go ahead and bash pretty privilege or disrespect people with pretty privilege. Let us push for all of us going ahead to put more time into the way we look as people, not only on the outside, but also on the inside. All right, y'all, that is the end of my video. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of y'all. If you've gotten to the end of my video, tell me what candy has pretty privilege. Yeah? Honestly, Twizzlers. Twizzlers is nasty, but because it looks kind of cute, everyone likes eating it. I think it's gross. I think it's gross. Like, maybe Red Vines? Maybe, red Vines might be better than Twizzlers, for sure. But Twizzlers itself, it's got pretty privilege. Y'all like it too much. But anyways, let me know what you think down below. <laughs> Be sure to hit that like button down below if you like this video and hit that subscribe button if you like to see more of my face. Also hit that notification bell on the side. All right, y'all, it is your favorite straight and creative show lay signing out of this video. And remember, God made you special and he loves you very much and you can do anything you set your mind to with Christ, of course. All right, y'all, peace. Yeah, I'm talking about. Bring it back.